Is there cool small projects like uh, archive sanity and and so on that you're thinking about the that that the the world the ML world can anticipate? There's some always like some fun side projects. Yeah, um, archive sanity is one. Uh, the, basically, like there's way too many archive papers. How can I organize it uh, and uh, recommend papers and so on? Uh, I transcribed all of your yeah. uh, podcasts. <laughs> what did you learn from that experience? Uh, from transcribing the process of like you like consuming audiobooks and and podcasts and so on. And yeah. here's a process that achieves um, closer to human level performance on annotation. Yeah, well, I definitely was like surprised that uh, transcription with OpenAI's Whisper was working so well mm -hmm. compared to what I'm familiar with from Siri and like a few other systems. I guess it worked so well and. Uh, that's what gave me some energy to like try it out, and I thought it could be fun to run on podcasts. It's kind of not obvious to me why Whisper is so much better compared to anything else, because I feel like there should be a lot of incentive for a lot of companies to produce transcription mm -hmm. systems, and that they've done so over a long time. Whisper is not a super exotic model; it's a transformer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes mel spectrograms and you know just outputs tokens of text. It's not crazy. Uh, the model and everything has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually 100 percent sure why this yeah, came not, out. It's not that. obvious to me either. <laughs> it, it makes me feel like I'm missing something fundamental. I'm missing something. <laughs> yeah, because there is a huge, even at Google and so on, YouTube uh, transcription. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's unclear. But some of it is also integrating into a bigger system. Yeah, that so the user interface, how it's deployed, and all that kind of stuff. Maybe running it as an independent thing is e much easier, like an order of magnitude easier than deploying to a large integrated system like YouTube transcription or um, anything like meetings, like Zoom has trans uh, transcription. That's kind of crappy, but creating an interface where it detects the different individual speakers, it's able to um, display it in compelling ways, run it in real time, all that kind of stuff. Maybe that's difficult. I, but that's the only explanation I have because like, um, I'm currently paying uh, quite a bit for human uh, transcription, and human mm. caption right. annotation. And like, it seems like uh, there's a huge incentive to automate that. Yeah. It's very confusing. And I think, I mean, I don't know if you looked at some of the whisper transcripts, but they're quite good. They're good. Uh, <laughs> and especially in tricky cases. Yeah. I've, I've seen, uh, Whisper's performance on like super tricky cases and it does incredibly well. So I don't know, a podcast yep. is pretty simple. It's like high quality audio and you're speaking usually pretty clearly. Yep. And so I don't know, It uh, I don't know what OpenAI's plans are yeah. either. But yeah, there's always like fun, fun projects basically. And uh, Stable Diffusion also is opening up a huge amount of experimentation, I would say in the visual realm and gener generating images and videos and movies. Ultimately. Yeah, videos now, and so that's going to be pretty crazy. Uh, that's going to that's going to almost certainly work, and it's going to be really interesting when the cost of content creation is going to fall to zero. You used to need a painter for a few months to paint a thing, and now it's going to be speak to your phone to get your video. <laughs> so if Hollywood will start using that to generate scenes, um, which completely opens up. Yeah, so you can make a, a like a movie like Avatar eventually for under a million dollars. Much less, maybe just by talking to your phone. I mean, I know it sounds kind of crazy, 